I don't think my hair is sticking up as bad today. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March, and this particular book haul is brought to you by Library Sales. I've been able to find a few in the last month, two months. Uh, I've got one more that I'm considering attending at the end of April. We'll see if I get to that one. It's one that I've been to many times. Every book is 50 cents. It's kind of difficult to pass it up, but we'll see. We'll see if I make it. But I have attended a few. I'm looking at the piles here. I have a couple of books that I bought from a library that has a store in its downstairs. And I have um, a larger pile that I bought from a library that has not had their library sale for a couple of years because of COVID. And it's usually one of the best. I love it. But this time it was a little disappointing. But I will show you the books that I got from both of those sales. And I think in total, I may have spent $10. And I have um, 12 books here. So that's a pretty good average. Now, I did buy three classics. And this one is the uh, Dover Thrift edition of Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser. And I, I love buying classics. And the font is really big. It's a good size paperback. It's in perfect shape, a little wrinkly on the back cover. Um, but this is very quickly an 18 year old girl without money or connections ventures forth from her small town in search of a better life in Theodore Dreiser's revolutionary first novel. This is the chronicle of Carrie Mieber's rise from obscurity to fame and the effects of her progress on the men who use her and are used, are used in turn around a storm of controversy and debate upon its debut in 1900. So I love love the cover as well. The Dover Thrift Editions, I'm not always very happy with those, but this one looked really good, um, and it's in great shape, so I picked it up. And just for a fun fact, this one is old enough so that it looks like it's this one was published in 2004. Yeah, 2004, and at the time, the listed price was $3.50. Can you imagine buying a paperback of this size these days for $3.50? No, not really. Uh, the other classics that I like to collect, and one day I'll show you my, my varied collections, are the Barnes & Noble hardbacks. Um, and this one is The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. And I really like these. I usually love the art on the cover. They have the same format. It's, you know, everyone is a different color, has the Barnes & Noble logo. They also have this for an end paper. And on the inside of the, the book, there's kind of an, I think you can see it, the stamp of the, um, there's a B stamp, I think that's what it is. And I think it's just really pretty. And they're all, they all come in different colors. This one is kind of a dark green. And again, Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. And the other one is a book I've read, one of my favorite classics. I've read it, I own it in other versions, but this is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. And I love the artwork on this cover as well. And it's got kind of this mauve pink color. And that's the color of the hardback. But I really love to collect these hardcover editions, the Barnes & Noble hardcovers. And... Um, the font, I always look at the font. The font is super big and easy to read. Uh, they are not, they've got some um, footnotes. A lot of the pages have footnotes, which are always very helpful in these editions. Um, so I was glad to find these two that are in great condition. So the rest of these are just regular books. <laughs> like they're not classics or regular books, but you know what I mean. Um, this one I gasped when I found it because I had seen this on, I think I saw this on Doris, Doris's channel, All D Books, and I don't remember if, I don't remember who she was reading this with, but I'm going to include um, a link for Doris's channel below. This is Ursula K. Le Guin's No Time to Spare, and this is, um, it's a collection of her blog posts, and I never even realized that she had a blog. It's uh, what mattered to her late in life, her concerns with the world and her wonder of it. And it's kind of a, a thin little book, but I was really happy to find this. It looks like it's 
never been opened. It's that brand new. Um, this one was all over BookTube as well, and this was shortlisted for the Bailey's Women Prize for Fiction. It was called Bailey's at the time, published in 2017. And this is uh, Stay With Me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say her name. It is Ayobami Adebayo. I'm hoping I have that right. And let's see. I don't know. I don't see her bio on the book. Um, and I wish, I believe she is a Nigerian author. And very briefly, this is the story of two people, two Nigerian people who fell in love. And uh, they agreed that polygamy is not for them because it was customary. But four years into their marriage, they're having fertility issues. And her in-laws, the, the wife's in-laws arrive on a doorstep with a young woman who they want to give to their son as a second wife, hopefully to produce a baby. Uh, so that's a really interesting, I think it's going to be a really interesting discussion and commentary on relationships and love and commitment and what all that means. And by the way, if you see the, the lighting change, the the sun is in and out. It's kind of partially cloudy today. The sun's coming in, going out, coming in, going out. But that's why. Now this one I found for like a dollar. And I think I think at one point I used to have it, but I don't anymore. So it's like I, I'm going to just rebuy it. And I found the hardback of The Sleepwalker's Guide to Dancing by Mira Jacobs. Uh, Mira Jacob. And it's like in brand new condition. And it's kind of a, it's a hefty, kind of a hefty book. Um, and I believe it's her first book. Let me see. Um, it's her first novel. Published in 2014. And it's debut, yep, debut novelist Mira Jacob. Um, it's a, a plotted journey through 1970s India to suburban 1980s New Mexico to Seattle during the dot-com boom. Celebrated brain surgeon Thomas Epen has been sitting on his porch talking to dead relatives. At least that is the story his wife, Kamala, prone to exaggeration, tells their daughter Amina, a photographer living in Seattle. And Amina returns home and finds the situation much more complicated than her mother told her about, and um, family drama ensues from there. So... Again, it's almost brand new. I One of the reasons I love hardbacks is the size of the font. And usually hardbacks have much more spacing in between the lines. Um, I think I say that all the time because my eyes are not the best. This one is Frank McCourt's Teacher Man in this, again, pristine hardcover edition. And this is the third installment in his memoir series that began with Angela's Ashes and the second book was Tiz. And this book talks about his career as a teacher in New York City. Um, yeah, I, I haven't, I've heard mixed reviews about this one. Um, Angela's Ashes is one of my favorite books of all time, and I really enjoyed Tiz, not as much, so I'm interested to see how I feel about this one. I have the hardcover to complete my little set, and I'm also going to listen to this on audio because he narrates all of his books, and they're fantastic on audio. Now, this one is out of my comfort zone, but this came with a massively high recommendation from my dentist of all people and I've seen it all over booktube this is Andy Weir's Hail Mary and this is not a book I would normally pick up uh Andy Weir's got a bunch of books out there and this is kind of a sci-fi adventure uh Rylan Grace is the sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission if he fails humanity and earth itself will perish Except that right now he doesn't know that. He can't even remember his own name, let alone the nature of his assignment or how to complete it. All he knows is that he's been asleep for a very, very long time. And he's just been awakened to find himself millions of miles from home with nothing but two corpses for company. And like I said, this is one of those books. Uh, the font is massive, by the way. <laughs> and this is one of those books that... My dentist was raving about it. And he and I will talk about books whenever I go in for an appointment. And he's like, even if this is not the type of book that you like, you're going to love it because it's just going to drive you through the story. And for anybody on BookTube that I have seen review this, they've said the same thing. So I thought, you know what, for a dollar or two, I'm going to try that. 
Now, one of my favorite um, Western authors is Wallace Stegner. He wrote a book, Angle of Repose, which is one of my all-time favorites. And I found this um, in excellent condition. This is Wallace Stegner, His Life and Work by Jackson J. Benson. So I'm hoping this is going to be a really interesting literary biography. Uh, Wallace Stegner lived from 1909 to 1993. And his career spanned more than 50 years. He wrote more than two dozen works of history, biography, essays, and fiction, um, which included the Pulitzer Prize book, Angle of Repose, and the best-selling Crossing to Safety. Um, he is called the Dean of Western Writers, and uh, really, really looking forward to this. I have uh, Angle of Repose I really want to reread this year, and I have a few of his other books that I'm really eager to get to. Now, these last three, I think I just picked these up yesterday. We went to Ossipee yesterday, Andy, right? What's today? Friday? Friday. And these are from a library that has a bookstore sale room in their basement. So we thought, you know what? We're, we took a drive, took an adventure on Friday, and uh, drove up to the mountains. And on our way back, we stopped in the library, and I bought these three books. This one is Dorothy Allison's Two or Three Things I Know for Sure, and I've read this book in paperback and did not have it anymore, so I wanted to rebuy it. Um, this is a very quick little memoir of her life. Uh, she wrote Bastard Out of Carolina, which is a spectacular book, and this is a, um, a short memoir um, with photographs. It tells the story of her family. She comes from a, came from a poor Southern family, uh, extremely poor, uh, riddled with addiction, abuse, neglect, that type of thing. And um, it was, I really enjoyed reading it when I read it previously, wanted to have my copy again, and I will most definitely reread this one. And this one is the Middlesteins or Middlesteins from Jamie Attenberg. And I really, um, it's got a little aging to the edge of the pages, but this is another one that doesn't look like it was ever checked out. It looks brand new. Oh, it was checked out twice, but it still looks brand new. Still has the library um, little sheet on the back, and it's got the library cover and everything. This is Jamie, At um, Jamie Attenberg's Middlesteins. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Uh, let's see. For more than 30 years, Edie and Richard Middlestein shared a solid family life together in the suburbs of Chicago. Two children, a nice house, ample employment, and generous friends. But things are splintering apart. For one reason, it seems. Edie's fixated on food. Thinking about it, eating it, and if she doesn't stop, she won't have much longer to live. What can I relate to in that book? <laughs> I'm not going to relate a little too much, I think. Um, but look at the look at the cover. This has pictures of hamburgers and French fries, and um, looks like fast food all over the co cover. And so I definitely that grabbed my eye right a, right away. And once I saw who it was, I grabbed it. My last one to show you is the hardcover version of a book that I have or had in paperback, and this is uh, Dasha Drinjic's Trieste, and. Britta. Britta Bowler was just talking about her as an author, and I wish I can remember the book she was talking about. I will put the title in the text below somewhere or above me somewhere, um, but she she's since passed away. She was a Croatian novelist, uh, playwright, and literary critic, and this book was translated by Ellen Elias Bursak, from Serbo-Croatian. And um, this author, this particular Drenjic, writes about Croatia, Croatian wartime, and it, very difficult content to read about. This one, um, Haya, Tedes Tedes Haya Tedeschi sits alone in Gorizia in northeastern Italy, surrounded by a basket of photographs and newspaper clippings. Now an old woman, she waits to be reunited after 62 years with her son, fathered by an SS officer and stolen from her by the German authorities as part of Himmler's clandestine Lebensborn project. Haya reflects on her Catholicized Jewish family's experiences, dealing unsparingly with the massacre of Italian Jews in the concentration camps of Trieste. 
So again, it's not going to be easy reading, very difficult content. Um, this particular author is very um, open and raw with the content of her books. Very similar themes. And gosh darn it, I wish I could remember the book that Britta was just talking about in um, a few videos back of hers. So I will link... I will link her video down below. And she she really um, admires this author as well. And I had I actually saw this book first on somebody else's channel. So I will try to get all of the information and put the links in the description box below. So this is my first installment of my book haul videos. This one was the middle, this one was the library books. What else do I have? I have books that I thrifted. I have books that are brand new but bargain and I also have a few brand new books. I, th I showed you um, Young Mungo the other day so I have another couple of piles here and there so I will probably have at least two more book haul videos coming out so keep an eye out for those. Let me know what you think about any of these books and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.